Hi friends, I'm Ashley from Joyful Noise Living and I'm so glad you found me here at Mom's IRL on YouTube and I am excited to share with you today five ways to ease into your homeschool schedule. This is the usually around the time that we all are starting to do school again and I've been doing school, homeschooling my kids for um, since my oldest was about two or three. We did a little preschool activities and so this is going on my fourth year, my fourth full year and my oldest is in her second grade year and I'm really excited. Um, I've also on top of that got a pre-k little four and a half year old boy and my youngest is a toddler right now and he's the kind of toddler that makes me want to pull my hair out most days. But. Uh, he will just be along for the ride. Anyway, we have done school now for two weeks and we have eased into our schedule. I haven't done a full-blown schedule yet and let me tell you that I think this is one of the best homeschool decisions I have made. I always, I'm one of those people who really hates transitions, periods. I, I'm an all-or-nothing person. I'm, we're either here or we're there. Like, there's none of this in between stages, but I'm realizing with the kids and transitioning from summer activities to a school schedule that giving my kids the heads up of what mommy expects from them with our schedule is a great thing to do um, before we actually dive into full schedules. That brings me to tip number one. Plan a week or several days ahead of school to ease into the schedule. So don't jump into school. Monday, it's first day of school. We wake up, we get our books out. Yay, let's start school. And and then everything you know goes to poo after the, a couple hours because the kids are like, no, I want to go play my, my video games, or I want to go back to bed, or can I go play outside, mommy? You know, you're gonna run into that. This usually starts with your nighttime routine. So, what do you need to do with the kids the night before? Get them to bed at a decent hour. <laughs> so, you start with your nighttime routine. You start putting them to bed at the time you want them to go to bed when school starts. It's hard to do because the kids, the sun is still up late, um, but just start winding them down 30 minutes to an hour l earlier than they have been doing for summer. At least they're laying down in bed. Maybe they can read, maybe they can draw, maybe if they're not asleep, not a big deal. But at least they are in bed at the time that you want them to be in so that way they can get used to waking up earlier and maybe they'll be a little less resistant in the mornings when they do wake up, if you know what I mean. Wink, wink, maybe. So. Start them going to bed a little bit earlier so they can start waking up earlier and being more refreshed. Our tip two is to prep yourself, your heart, your mind, and your body. It's a little harder to do when you have a, a baby or a newborn and you are waking up through the night, but if you're coming out of that stage and you've got your kids that um, are all sleeping through the night, then get yourself up early before the kids and give yourself 20 minutes, 10 minutes, an hour if you can before the kids get up to prep yourself and it's it's not just about like oh getting the books out getting your lesson plans out it's more about getting your mind in the right place so what does that look like for you is that exercising is that um, having a quiet cup of coffee is that doing your Bible study um, is that showering and getting yourself ready <laughs> physically um, you know what I think all of our goal is to probably do all of those things in the morning before the kids get up but you know shoot for one or two what are those things that you can do f so that you are ready when your kids walk down the stairs on that first morning or every morning they or they come into the kitchen they come into the dining room they come into the school room and you are ready to greet the kids with a smile and you can say good morning i'm so glad you're here are you excited and ready to start school so that kind of things so make sure you do that that's my tip two tip three here it is okay this is the if you don't remember anything, remember one of these. <laughs> walk through your routine. Take a whole day, if not a week or two, to walk through your routine without doing your schoolwork. Do no school on this day. Zip, zero, zilch. Don't do the school. What you're going to do is you have a trial run through, basically. You tell the kids, okay, right after breakfast and they've done their thing, you're ready to go, it's 8.30 you know, 9 o'clock, and you say, okay kids, we're gonna walk through our day as if we're doing school and you're going to have them sit where they need to sit. For example, we have morning time first and that is during breakfast. I have the kids at the table, we do our Bible, we do um, our poem, we do our grammar, we do our memory work, and they're doing it, um, we pretend to do it while we're sitting at the table eating breakfast. Then we walk through chores. 
So I have the kids go make their beds, get dressed. And this we actually do when we do practice school because chores they can always do, you know, on any day. So even on your run through day, still have the kids do chores. So we do chores after that. We walk through doing the laundry, emptying the trash baskets, um, putting clothes on, making their bed, brushing their teeth, and then we're ready for the day. Then you come to your school time, at least we do. So I showed them where their books are. They run and they go get their books and then they bring it back to the dining room table. And then we say, okay, this is when we do spelling. We do, we pretend to do it. And then I say, okay, where does your book go after you're done? And then they go and they take it back. And then we move through our routine as if we're doing it, but we didn't do any lessons. And they, I make sure that they know where their books are, when, where they have to get them, and then I show them where they need to go when they're done. It's not gonna run very smoothly at first, especially that first day. They don't know what the heck is going on. Only you do in your head. You know, you've thought it all through, right? But um, this is why you have this day, at least a day or two, if not a whole week, to practice running through who goes where, what do they have, what do they need to be doing, and when. Another thing that I do is on that trial run through time is we include the meals and the snacks and so I go ahead and do our regular lunch, our regular snack time um, uh, as we will be doing on our school days. So after you run through your trial routine then you can take the next few days to, to actually go over the things that the kids need to know in order to do their work on their own. For example, do, how does their, maybe they're doing a new spelling curriculum. You need to walk through how they do each lesson on their own. Or computer lessons. And um, my daughter is doing that this year. I, and I'm so glad I did this. But um, and for our trial run week, I, had, I showed her where the computer was. I had her get it out. I showed her where the link was that she needed to click to get onto her lessons. And then I walked through her for the first lesson. And then the next day I did it again. So I did this with her for about three, four days. And now my daughter, she can pull it out and I say, okay, it's math time. And so she goes and she gets her computer and she does it all by herself. She'll call on me if she needs help understanding something, but at least she, she can get it started, she can get it done and put it away. Work through and hash out those uh, logistical things that your kids might run into. What are the issues uh, that, that might come up that you can work through with them before the school day actually starts. Tip number four, um, expect for it to take longer than you want it to. Give yourself grace and give your kids grace. Plan for that. Plan for the kids to, to throw fits about it. Plan for somebody to um, sleep through an alarm or not want to get up right away or um, they're gonna get frustrated when somebody's taking their seat or they're gonna get frustrated because they want to go play outside But it's time to do reading time instead So give yourself grace take a deep breath and know that your schedule is gonna take a little longer Than it will that you have in your head <laughs> So if you plan and prepare ahead of time for that Then you'll be ready and you'll you'll be hopefully able and ready to respond with grace and not just be like, no, it's time to sit down because I said so. You know, you won't respond in that manner. Hopefully you'll respond with a little more peace, right? There will be mistakes, right? Um, so when you are ready for these interruptions and you prepare ahead of time, then you can be proactive instead of reactive to those interruptions and to those mistakes that might happen in your, in your routine. Now for tip number five is post your routine and your chores list somewhere where the kids can see it. I, this is probably one of my favorite things about homeschooling, honestly, like if I could just make chore charts and routine charts and sell them for people, then I would be happy camper. But we have to do them, we have to follow through. But anyway, so create a checklist. It could be however you, you and your, what works for your family. You know your family best. Maybe it's a whiteboard that you write on every morning or every night and they can see it in your dining room or your school room. Uh, maybe it's a laminated checklist that you put on the fridge that they can check off. Maybe it's a spiral notebook. I know a lot of, I've heard of many families doing this as well. Create a routine board that is the same or what is the same every day. When do we do breakfast? When do we do chores? When do we do, um, when do we do school? <laughs> when, who works with mommy when? Who's not work, who's working on their own individually? And um, when do we do nap time or lunch or snacks? You know, hash that all out, make it a nice pretty little poster or write it on the whiteboard on the fridge 
and then have it posted for your kids because I'm sure there might be some some personality types in your family that would really appreciate that. Some of your kids really do like to know what is coming next and they um, can handle themselves uh, more better behaviorally when they have know what to expect um, instead of being like, okay, what's next, mommy? Another tip, bonus tip, I guess, with that one is maybe you have older kids or you have some kids who have that personality of liking to be in control. Maybe you ask them what they would like to do and what next. And for example, my middle son, he, he doesn't mind following a checklist. I give him orders and he does them and he's just fine. He's like, okay, what's next, mommy? And I tell him and I, okay, mommy, what's next? And I tell him, he, he doesn't mind that. My oldest, on the other hand, she likes to have some say in what she does and what order she does it in. And I've learned to let that go because there's certain things that I want done in the day but I don't have a certain order to some of them. So I give her my list of four or five things that need to be done, and I say, you go do this, you have an hour, do it in whatever you want. And she'll say, okay, mommy, I want to do my math first. Great, okay, mommy, I want to brush my hair next. You know, things like that. So that way I'm letting her have a little bit of say in it, and I have a little less resist, little less, just a little less resistance um, when I give her a little bit of autonomy with that. So those are my five tips for easing into a homeschool schedule. I do have two more bonus tips, so give me one more minute if you want to stick around. My first bonus tip that you can take it or leave it, I know this may not be for everyone, but it works for me and my family, but I plan for a late start on Mondays. And that's not just when I'm practicing my schedule, that's, that's every Monday. I know some families that take Mondays off and they actually do school on Saturday instead, but for us, our weekends can be a little bit busy. Um, with time with uh, family and friends, um, doing household projects, things like that. So by the time it comes around to Sunday night and everyone crashes in bed, Monday morning is a little bit tough to get everybody going. And at least at this stage in the game with the ages my kids are at since they're so young and we don't have a super strict homeschool schedule just yet, I just let Monday mornings be a lot more slower and simpler. So I cut out many, many lessons on Monday. We still do a little bit of school but they very light, light um, school work for their individual work, like, like the math and the spelling and the writing and the uh, reading. We don't do a lot of that on Mondays. And that's because I want them to be able to sleep in a little bit. Um, we have a more leisurely breakfast and we spend a lot more time on chores, just getting the house reset from the weekend and our bodies and our minds just reset. Mondays are day to do lots of playing outside. So Mondays I plan for a later start. Okay, if you've stuck around this long, I do have one more bonus tip if you want to hear it. And I like this tip, it's helped me in my, um, my exasperation and my frustration many days. Always give yourself a backup plan B. And that's something that you think about and decide on before school happens. So the reason I have this is, your, what if your morning is shot? What if you have unplanned interruptions, unexpected illnesses, you sleep through your alarm, a toddler spills milk and cereal all over the floor, or the toddler eats the potted plants and you have to clean that up, or you have a child who's super, super resistant and having a bad day and your morning is just shot, and, or you're tired, not feeling well, like this stuff is gonna happen. And sometimes you get to 10.30 a.m. and you haven't done any school yet. What are you gonna do? So I've learned instead of letting all those things ruin the rest of my day, I have a plan B and that's, I fall back on what do I have to absolutely positively have to get done that day. I decide on that and then the rest I drop. If you have all those interruptions, you're not going to have a lot more time left in the day to do what you need to get done. So therefore you need to do less things, right? So if you have less time, you need to do less things. So instead of freaking out and trying to cram it all in and getting stressed and everybody, mommy is stressed and the kids are stressed and the homeschool day is just gone, um, narrow it down to the few things that you can do that day and then reschedule things that, that still have to get done but aren't imperative for that day, reschedule them. So thank you so much for watching. I hope your homeschool week and your homeschool year goes swimmingly and that these tips are able to help you ease into your school year. Uh, thank you for watching. I'm at joyfulnoiseliving.com and I hope you go and live your joyful noise. Have a good day.